Hi, I'm Darnell with Wave Oven Recipes, and this is my review of the Gourmia Digital French Door Air Fryer Oven. So let's go ahead and get this unboxed, but on the outside of the box you can see that uh, they give you a picture of it. They tell you that it's got 17 one-touch cooking presets. It can hold a 12-inch pizza. It can hold six slices of toast, or make six slices of toast. And so we're going to go ahead and get this out of the box. So now things are all unboxed. So I want to show you the power cord. It's like a short, maybe three foot cord with a two prong polarized plug. As far as our accessories go, you get a bake rack. Well, this isn't a bake rack. This is a wire rack. You get a wire rack. They also give you a bake pan. So that's your bake pan. They also give you an air fry basket. All of these go the full width of the cooker to be able to slide on. And also they give you a drip pan. So we'll just open things up and We'll just put that drip pan right inside right now, so we have that in there. As we move along, you get a like a quick start, step by step quick start guide. Also some documentation here. You get what's this thing falling out of here? Uh, this is just a little paraphernalia there. Um, they give you the manual. They also give you a big recipe book, so they give you a lot. I mean, this is um, this is 59 pages of recipes. I mean, some of the pages do have a full photo, but yeah, it's like a, a photo on every page, basically. So there's like on every page there's a photo. Sorry if you couldn't see before I tipped it up like this. But every page has a photo and a recipe. So, you know, it's not even like, you know, multiple recipes per page with a photo. Each um, page has a photo. That's kind of like my cookbook. <laughs> but uh, you can find more about that in the video description. But nothing in this video is sponsored. Um, let's see. We'll go ahead and we'll talk some more about this. And let me show you around the exterior of the cooker. You've got the sides here, and this side there, and on the back, you can see around the back side here. So, not a very big hump in the back there. So, that's a look all the way around. You're supposed to give four inches all around the entire cooker, four inches of clearance, and put it on a heat resistant surface. Now this cooker uses 1700 watts of power. Given the size of it being kind of looking like kind of a wider, kind of a, a slightly larger size cooker, being just 1700 watts and you know we'll see as we move along how things perform in actual testing and use and such. But it seems like you know just 1700 watts in a cooker of this size, you know things are probably going to cook at best kind of medium on par with you know some cook I don't expect this to blow me away as far as the heat you know I don't expect this to be like um, some other cookers that can get really hot and you know really cook things up really fast with air frying it's probably gonna be probably more you know kind of average is what I'm expecting but we'll see how that all goes the temperature ranges on this cooker are between 90 degrees Fahrenheit and 450 degrees Fahrenheit. That varies greatly depending on the function where the limits are within that range of 90 to 450 degrees. Different functions of course have different heating range limits and we'll get into that later. It has time ranges from 1 minute to 72 hours and those range also greatly depending on your function. And I will say that uh, the time range for roast I find I find to be most disappointing, but we'll get into that later when we're talking about 
actual functions of this cooker. Now here's a close-up view of the cooker. You see on the side here, of course, we have the control panel with all the different functions. Make note of, you know, there's functions on this side, there's functions on that side, but there's also in the middle, there's a few functions in the middle too, as well as your time and temp controls. So, and down here, you've got like your stop, if you want to stop the cook, pause or start your cook. And also, this is your power button here, this little icon there is your power button. And so, we'll go inside now with the French doors. When they open, they both pop open because this one has kind of a tab into that one. And so, it, when you pull them out, they both pop open. These doors are not on any type of hinge or anything to like auto open or auto close. And actually, I think that's a good thing considering when you have doors that can auto open and auto close, like um, with an earlier cooker that I reviewed, you could even, you know, maybe just tap on the slightest bit or have the least bit of vibration. You could be going in and getting some food or something and the doors could close on you, which would not be very good and safe. So, in my opinion, at least. So... I'm good with these doors not being like automatic, both open and closed. You can open and close them individually. But inside here, now that we take a look inside, we see that we have one, two, three rack levels. There are three rack levels. You see on the inside, there's nothing in the back. On the right side, there's a air fry fan. It is not a very large fan and it's just the fan I can even see the blades of the fan um, a bit from my vantage point so I've put a little extra light on it so that maybe you can see the fan better but there's definitely no heating element over that fan so it's just the fan and when we go up top we see that we have you know no fan up there and up top you have two heating elements just two down bottom you have just two heating elements so that's basically all there is really inside I'm not seeing where the uh, I'm not seeing where the ambient probe is for measuring temp I mean it I'm sure it's got an ambient probe somewhere in the cooker but I'm just not seeing it I'm also not seeing any light in the cooker unless the light is somehow hidden from view so I don't think there is a light in this cooker but we'll find out later as we move along as I look through the manual I saw nothing about a light in the cooker and there's no light button all right so now we've got the Gourmia here next to the Comdo or Emerald um, this is the Emerald actually but um, it's the exact same in my opinion as the one made by Comdo just different companies you know behind but the same in all respects that I can tell this is the same as Emerald and Comdo same anyway these cookers you can see them side by side now you can see that the Emerald or Comdo is much taller and you know that may be because the control panels on the top and I'm going to do a little bit of a measuring around so we can see from top end to end is a little over 17 inches, 17 and a half. Now when I go on the top from you know end to end here, it's just 17 inches, you know, about 17 even. When I go front to back, I'll include the hump in this. There's a small hump in the back of the comb though we've got to the handle just under 17 inches with the Gourmia with its smaller hump in the back we've got up to the handle we've got just under 15 inches so front to back this one is you know smaller side to side this one is smaller let's see you know from the top to bottom here like this you've got like 14 and a half almost 15 inches with the Gourmia you've got like 11 and a half inches so the Gourmia is actually a smaller cooker 
in every respect. Now on the inside, when we talk about the space inside to cook with, if we go from the bottom drip pan up to where we have, you know, basically the top, it's like eight and a half inches on that uh, emerald condo. And inside of the gourmet, it's nine inches, well, a little under nine, but it's over eight and a half. So, interesting, the inside is a little taller in the gourmet, but when we do the side to side here, We've got about 14 and a half side to side there. In the gourmet side to side, it's probably going to be easiest like this. You've got just 12 inches, you know, just maybe a hair over 12 inches. Yeah, I mean, it's like maybe 12 and a half inches at best that you have side to side inside the gourmet. So the gourmet may have a little more space, you know, top to bottom, but side to side, it is smaller. Now I have a 13 inch bake pan with no handles. With the Emerald Condo, you can put the 13 inch bake pan in there, set it right on that bake rack, and you can, you know, cook away. With the Gourmet 13 inch pan, I can't get it in. It's not because I've got stuff there. Let me, let me show you more, more clearly. If I move this back and let's say I get all this stuff out, and I try and put that in there, you know, that's not going. I can't get my 13 inch bake pan with no handles in any which way I want to try. It will not go in. So you cannot use a 13 inch bake pan with no handles in this cooker. Now we have the Gourmet next to the Chefman air fryer oven. And so with the Chefman, you see the Chefman's a little taller. The Chefman, you know, top to bottom is like about 14 inches whereas the gourmet is you know maybe 11 and a half your front to back on the chefman try and, it's got really almost no hump at all in the back but up to the handle maybe 15 and a half inches you know with the gourmet just giving a little for the hump it's 15 about 15 and a half there so i think we got about about the same, yeah, about the same, almost the same, or nearly the same as far as front to back when you include some of that hump space, but give me another sec here. I just want to be certain about this. Now, it's actually, I'm thinking maybe the hump's a little, because when you put them together, the hump on the, the hump on the chef is just a little more. I mean, I mean, it's just maybe a hair is more than the gourmet but I mean you probably aren't worried that much about that particular so going side to side we've got maybe 15 and a half inches there on the gourmet you got your about about 17 inches there and we open up and we see the cooking area we've got uh, side to side inside we got about 12 and a half there just about the same as we did there in the, the gourmet already and top to bottom we've got just about seven and a half inches and we know in the gourmet we've got maybe about a little over eight and a half so you know i guess depending on how you count this if we we did it off the top of the lip of that then you've got just about eight inches so you know you can compare that to this and the previous comparison but uh, with both of these you're not going to get a 13 inch big pan in all right so now we got the gourmet next to the ninja dual basket air fryer and this just to give you a comparison with you know something a little different the gourmet is basically bigger in most respects the ninja is a little taller i guess if we put them you know right one right in front of the other the gourmet is still wider because it's got the display unit on the side there and you know for cooking area you've got these two whereas you've got all of that with the gourmet so that's uh, some comparison of different cookers if you didn't see a comparison with a cooker that you are interested in you'll have to do your own you know visual comparison of reviews I've done of others where I did measurements and stuff 
to make your own determinations. Now for the Gourmet, I wanted to do one more thing. I wanted to measure the inside of it um, going like front to back inside. I did not do that earlier. So just sticking a tape measure in here to the back and you've got about 12, 12 and a half inches. So you've got 12 and a half this way, you've got 12 and a half that way, and you got you know roughly eight to eight and a half that way. So that gives you a good look at the different measurements. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the initial plug-in of the cooker. So just going to take it here and grab this plug and get it on in. So there we go. So on the initial plug-in we get a beep. You saw a little light but then it went out. But if you hit the power button then you know it pops on with a beep and the on on the display. And so now I want to show you basically after it goes to on it shows the display with kind of like all blank like that. And I'm going to start talking about the functions in a moment but I wanted to show you for every function except broil you're supposed to use the middle rack. Now which accessories you use and how you configure things differs a little and we'll get into those details but everything usually is going to use the middle rack except for broil which would use the top rack. Now for you who want to do your dehydration on the top rack instead of the middle I can only say that they recommend that you use the middle for dehydration too. And you know keep in mind your fan is kind of lower set over there in the corner it's not a top fan blowing down on things so that may be some good advice there so let's get on into the functions and oops, a hard slam there reviewing all of the functions on this cooker the first one that we'll go into is toast and so when you click toast you see you get a three and that's basically the level three of shades of cook and with toast you basically can do shades one through seven by hitting the temp button and there's no way to turn that beeping off but you can go between one and seven on your shades you're supposed to use the wire rack that we have in there and the fan doesn't run when you're doing that the next one that we'll talk about is basically well bagel we won't talk about bagel it's exactly the same so we'll move on to bake and so with bake it does have a preheat some of these functions have a preheat, some of them do not, but it's like a mandatory preheat that's built in. You can't skip it. So bake has a preheat, and the temperature, well the time ranges are between 1 minute and 99 minutes. Just 1 to 99 you can adjust minutes. Now if we get up to, you can hold it for it to, you know, go rapidly. When you hold it, you see it went over 60, and it's like, you know they don't show you an hour it's like 69 minutes okay and the temperature ranges are between 170 degrees Fahrenheit and 450 so you know you can hit that and or you can hold that to adjust your temperature between 170 and 450 and the fan is off when you're doing bake there is no fan that runs during bake there's no way to manually invoke or turn off the fan. Some functions have the fan, some don't. Bake does not have the fan. The next function that we're going to talk about is roast. And with roast, and I forgot to mention, with roast and bake, you're going to use the bake pan, of course. But um, with roast, it's also a time range between 1 minute and 99 minutes. Temperature range is again 170 degrees Fahrenheit to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. The fan is again off. Our next function is broil. And with broil, you get the preheat again, just like you do with roast. With roast, you get a preheat. I may not have mentioned that. With broil, you get a preheat. With bake, you get a preheat. All of them got a preheat. But broil only goes 1 minute to 60 minutes. And so, you know, I guess you don't need the extra 39 minutes there. The temperature is fixed to 450. I cannot adjust the temp on broil. It's fixed at 450. And you're supposed to, of course, use that top rack and use the bake pan. And there's no fan. 
The next one that we'll talk about is the pizza function. With the pizza function, again, a preheat, cooking times are 1 minute to 60 minutes. The cooking temperature is 170 degrees Fahrenheit to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. You are expected to use, or they recommend to use, the bake pan with pizza. That's a little, I think, possibly unconventional. Um, I think I'm going to break the rules on that when I do a pizza test. I'm going to probably just put it on the wire rack and see what happens. But they want you to use the pan in their preheat. I guess maybe, I mean, that is what they recommend. And so, you know, with a preheat, I'll put the pan in and let the pan preheat and put the pizza on the pan like they recommend. And we'll see what happens in the pizza test because, you know, hey, it may work out. It may not. If it doesn't, then we know they gave us some bad advice. If it does, then they were on point. But we'll see about that. So the temperature ranges for pizza are 170 degrees Fahrenheit to 450. The time is one minute to one hour. You um, have no fan with pizza. The next one that we'll go over is the convection bake button. Convection bake. It has a preheat. Time range one minute to one hour. Temperature range 170 degrees Fahrenheit to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. You will use the bake pan with convection bake and there is no fan even though it's called convection bake they say there is no fan that's interesting i'm just going to hit start to see if i see any fan movement and i see the fan immediately move so that's interesting and it looks like you know since i turned it on for a moment i guess there's like some type of internal cool down that's running even though i stopped things and turned it off and on so, you know, after you use it, you're going to get probably like a couple minutes of internal cool down. You just got to let it do that until it stops. It is a pretty quiet fan, but apparently the manual has an error where it says the convection bake has no fan, which would make no sense. Convection bake does have a fan, and the manual has an error. And I'll even show you in the manual. Here we go on page 13 of their official manual. You've got convection bake, and when you go down on convection bake to fan, it says fan off when there is very much a fan, and that's what convection baking is all about. But the next function we're going to go on forward to is dehydrate, which is there in the middle. And on dehydrate, you have no preheat, you have a cooking range, well, a cooking time of between one to 72 hours so you can go 1 to 72 hours with your dehydration your temperatures vary from 90 degrees Fahrenheit to 170 degrees Fahrenheit you would use the air fry basket when you are using dehydrate and you do get the air fry fan on dehydrate or I guess you could call it dehydration fan because you're dehydrating with reheat on reheat we have no preheat on reheat and you go one minute to one hour you have a temperature range from 170 to 450 you would use the bake pan on reheat and you have no fan on reheat for you know any convection air the next function we'll go over is keep warm with keep warm there is no preheat the time range is one minute to 99 minutes temperature range 150 degrees Fahrenheit to 200 degrees Fahrenheit you would use the bake pan on keep warm and there is no convection fan on keep warm now we will go into air fry and in air fry you do get a preheat time range is one minute to 60 minutes the temperature ranges are 170 degrees Fahrenheit to 450 degrees Fahrenheit you would of course use the air fry basket and you do get an air fry fan with air fry and what I just told you for air fry is basically the same for everything else here as far as the time ranges the temperature ranges whether it's going to have a fan they all have a fan so that's the same for fries wings bacon snacks vegetable and seafood the only difference is the accessory that you're going to use depending on the function so we've already discussed air fry we know things are very similar with fries using the air fry basket for wings, we do things just a little differently, even though the function features are pretty much the same. For wings, 
this you would use an air fry basket or a center like so and you would put the bake pan underneath to catch the drippings from your wings. Now with bacon, same thing. You want to have that same configuration with bacon. For the snacks function you would just have the air fry basket alone by itself and for vegetables you're going to have the bake pan instead of the air fry basket in there. So you got just that and then for seafood same thing just like that. Now I want to turn the cooker back on and I'm going to do a memory check of how the memory remembers things. So let's say I've got it on air fry and I up to 450 and I up the time to 30 minutes. So I've got it air fry 450 30 minutes. I hit start and it's going through its preheat motions. But before the preheat ends I just stop it. You know things are still cold in there but I stopped it and let's say I go back to air fry again. It totally forgot what I did. So you know you've got no memory with this thing after you do a cook I mean I guess there's no point in doing an unplug memory check basically after you do something it's not going to remember it now although that fan is still running things are totally cool in there I'm going to do a check on toast if I have things on level 4 toast I'm just going to hit start I just want to see it does 3 minutes 30 seconds so we're going to remember on level 4 toast 3 minutes 30 seconds after we do some things where it gets hot, we're going to see if that toast time changes, if it can compensate for knowing when the cooker is hot. Alright, so I let the fan run, the cool down fan run, till it stopped. It takes 10 minutes, 10 minutes for the cool down fan to do its thing. So after you use this cooker, even if you turn it on for a second, you know, like I turn it on for a second, turn it off and wait 10 whole minutes for the fan to stop. That's, um, I don't know of a cooker that has a fan that runs for that long. I don't know. There, there may be some others that I've used that run that long, but most don't. But anyway, at this point, I've got the iGrill 2 here with the ambient probe up there on the rack there. So we're going to do a little temperature testing. And so I'm going to get things turned on, go to air fry, go up to basically 450. And I'm going to up the cooking time. I'm just going to shoot it up to an hour because there's a number of things to be done at this point. And we're going to go ahead and hit start with that. And we're going to see how long it takes to preheat. And after preheat, we'll just, you know, maybe monitor things and do some other things after that. Alright, so things have been still in preheat for about maybe three to four minutes, and we're at 465 on the ambient probe, and the ambient probe is good to go as far as its calibration. But basically, things are way over 450. It's still in preheat, and it's been going for, you know, almost maybe four minutes of preheating almost now. And it's like we're at 490. I mean, this thing is, is rocking hard. So, you know, this cooker. You know, despite 1700 watts and the fan just over there on the side, this thing is putting in some work as far as getting hot and not taking too long to get hot. It, it just said add food and it's a 511, 517 is I think where it was for a moment. Like 511 is where it's at now. So let's say I added my food, I open the door and I, I guess as soon as I open the door it starts counting down. So recognize when the door is open, it just starts counting down. But, um, I mean, it's at like 518 now. Man, this is, uh, this thing is something else. It's, it's, you know, in a good way though, it's getting real hot. So, you know, never mind that 1700 watts being, you know, you know, maybe not enough. It's very much good with 1700 watts getting hot. And maybe this is why it needs a 10 minute cool down that they just, you know, put in there mandatory. <laughs> But uh, it's at 531 now, and it's only been into the cook part of things not even a whole minute, you know. This is great. This is great. It's at 531 still.
And while it's uh, cooking hot there at 531, I'm going <laughs> to open it. You know, it's supposed to be 450. It's 531. I just want to open. And you see the doors? You open them, it doesn't pause. But of course, you can do your hit that button to pause and then get your cook going again. But when you open the doors, it doesn't pause. But it will start counting down if it was at preheat. Now I'm going to basically just take my hand and just kind of touch the top. I can put my hand there for a moment, but it's, you know, it's kind of warm, a little hot. Sides are a little, well, this side is cool. Wow, that side, is, that side over there with air fry fan is, is pretty cool. Over here, it's kind of warm. Up front here, you know, I feel that heat emitting. I don't want to touch it. Just don't want to touch it. Now, over here in the back, I'm feeling I'm feeling some heat emitting there. This is, yeah, it, it's kind of it's kind of warm back there. Pretty hot. I mean, not not hot hot, not burn not burn hot if you just touch it for a sec. But it's pretty warm back there. I mean, there is the exhaust as well, but just touching a flat surface back there, it, it's kind of warm, kind of like this side and the top. Things are pretty pretty warm around these parts. This side's cool. And you know the front is pretty hot, so you know you don't want to be you know putting any food or anything on here that you don't want to have start cooking. But basically now it's been in cook mode for not even three minutes. It's holding steady at 518. I mean this thing is you know 450 for this cooker is about 518. That is impressive. This cooker, you know, is it's playing above expectations because it's staying nice and hot. And maybe that, you know, by it not being too wide, you can't get a 13-inch big pan in there. But, hey, it can get real hot with cooking things up. And that's pretty good. That's a pretty good deal. I'm going to hit stop here at this point. And I'm going to hit toast. And we're going to see now, if I put it on level 4 toast, what it does for time. It still does 330. So no matter what you do, it's going to think that you're doing, you know, the same toast stuff every time it's not going to compensate it doesn't know when it's hot when you're putting toast in there you just gotta you know deal with it if your cooker's already hot and you want to cook some toast just keep an eye on things one other thing I want to show you real quick uh, turning the cooker back on if I just go into the defaults for air fry and hit start well, let's go to something that doesn't have a preheat so Let's go over to uh, dehydrate here, and we'll, I'll just demonstrate with dehydrate. So with dehydrate, since it doesn't have a preheat, I can demonstrate this, but we'll hit start. And while it's running, you can adjust the time on the fly. You can adjust the temp on the fly during cooks. And so if you're at like 930 and you just add time, it just, you know, it'll add time. And since it's dehydrated, it works in real high time increments. So you're doing something like bake or air fry. It'll just do single digit, you know, moves of time as I showed earlier. Alright, so now let's do a test of some toast. Got my homemade wheat bread here. It is much larger than your regular store-bought bread if you see the size of the bread compared to the plate. So just using two of these and putting them over like that. And we're going to close up. And I'm going to go ahead and turn things on, hit toast. I'm going to up it again to shade 4 and hit start. And so we'll let it run for its 3 minutes 30 seconds and we'll see what we get on the other end. Alright, we're coming to the final seconds of this toast. And so I'm going to get it on out of there. I will mention, you know, just for the sake of mentioning, that I did let it cool down. Of course you didn't hear that fan running. I let things cool down before starting the toast. And there you see, you know, nicely toasted bread backside. Nicely toasted with some rack marks. So you do get a fairly, I'd say a fairly even toast. I think the front, you know, up front here things were a little cooler due to the door. But overall, you know, as far as both sides being evenly cooked, it was even on both sides. Just, you know, the door lets a little heat out. Now, I'm going to close things up. And I got some biscuits here, some Pillsbury Grands, and they're Southern Home Style. So, I'm going to open them up, 
get them on the bake pan here. I have the Copper Chef bake and grill mat lining the pan just so that it'll be easy to you know get them off and they won't stick too much. And these biscuits, by the way, are like out of the refrigerator. They're not frozen. So just going to get the rest of these set out here on the bake pan. All right, so I got my eight biscuits on the pan, and I'm going to get this wire rack out because we're going to be doing some baking, so I don't want that in the way. Got to always make sure you close that door to your right before you close that door to your left because, you know, the tab is on the door. But now I'm going to basically set things to bake. And that's going to be a bake at 375. So bake temp up to 375. Now you're supposed to do 375 for 14 to 15 minutes if you want, like, I guess, regular size biscuits. But then they say if you want taller biscuits, you can do 325 and you do 21 to 27 minutes. But we're going to do the 375 route and see how that performs. So for cook time, going to do down to, we'll do 15. And we'll see if we even need 15. I'm going to hit start with that. And it looks like it's gone into preheat. Things are still warm in there from the toast. But I guess not necessarily warm enough or... Maybe it's a timed preheat. We will see. I guess if it takes, you know, up to five minutes or over five minutes for the preheat, then we know it's a timed preheat. But if it stops preheating well ahead of that, then we know it's an actual temperature preheat that it's, you know, detecting that it's, you know, whatever temperature that it considers 375 to be. But we'll let that preheat continue. All right, we got the message to add food after just maybe a minute or two so it's definitely a temperature based preheat not a forced amount of time preheat so I'm going to get things in here on this middle rack do have the mat kind of hanging over a little but we'll just see what that does to things we're going to let them go ahead and cook and uh, I guess it is well it's not supposed to use the fan so it doesn't matter that the um, mat is kind of coming over if the fan were going to be involved that might be an issue but it's not like the fan's impeded or anything because there is no fan on bake. So we'll go ahead and let these continue to bake and I'll bring you back when they are done. But you can kind of watch the time lapse as they go. Alright, so I've let these biscuits go for 11 minutes. They look pretty good after 11 minutes. I'm going to basically get one, well, I'm going to pause things after, since things have been going for a good while there. I'm just going to take one, they're not too hot to touch. They're looking kind of done there, you know, they're just just done they're done inside there is moist so you know they're done I think they're good I'm just going to take them out and uh, put them over here in my 13 inch bake pan Ooh, I lost a biscuit and like well I can't get this whole thing up like that I'll have to get my biscuits off one at a time but I did lose one biscuit to the floor but that's okay but get these biscuits on out of here so, get those on out of there. Now while things are still warm in there, I'm going to try a frozen pizza. It's a 12 inch DiGiorno frozen pizza. And going to hit the pizza button. And we got 400 degrees, 12 minutes. Maybe it'll take 12, but I'm going to up the time to 21 just in case. Well, let's do 20, even 20 minutes. And hit start with that and we'll let that preheat run and then we'll throw it in if it has eight minutes left when the cook is done then we know it we know it did just 12 if it needs a little more we've got time for more so we'll let the preheat run and get the pizza on in there all right the preheat is finished and didn't take long at all 
And I'm going to take and get the pizza on up in there. Put it in there on that pan. Actually, you know, it barely fits on that pan. You see how it's kind of, it's kind of not flat in the pan. So that's some awkward advice that they say use the bake pan for a pizza, but it doesn't really fit, you know, it doesn't fit well on the pan. Now I could kind of, you know, try and tilt it up on the edges of the pan, but still it's going to sink in the middle anyway. So I'm thinking when you do your pizza, you know, their advice is probably not the best advice unless you want to deform pizza. I think for future pizzas I'll just use the wire rack as I would with most cookers when cooking a pizza. But we're going to see how this does. You know, the pan was still pretty hot from those biscuits and it had a little quick moment to preheat. So we'll let it go ahead and cook, do its thing, and I'll bring you back um, when it's done, but I'll let you watch the time lapse. So things have been going for 11 minutes and the pizza is not at all nearly done. So it's definitely going to need, um, you know, maybe 20 minutes at 400 and definitely should not have followed their advice of putting the bake pan down for a pizza. Definitely do a pizza on a wire wrap is what I'm going to do in the future. Um, one other thing I did want to mention is, as you've probably seen or maybe you didn't notice, there is definitely no light in this cooker, no light at all. So um, we'll just let this continue to cook and we'll see how long it takes, but it's going to be a uh, good bit longer than 12 minutes that they had in their setting. And I do want to show you in their manual as that pizza continues to cook, where they have this, what I consider an error, just personally. But you see they have pizza, and down here they show you the accessory to use. They have the bake pan, and we see that's probably not such a great idea. But we'll let this continue to cook. Alright, so things have been going for 19 minutes. I'm going to stop it there and just turn the cooker off and get the pizza on on out of there with that. I think um, you know 20 minutes 400 things look pretty decent. I am going to real quick check with my thermal pen. Yeah things are hot even in the middle. always like to check that just to make sure that the pizza got good and hot inside. So pizza's cooked. It's I'm feeling a soggy bottom to it, soggiest bottom, but it is fully cooked. I think some cheese is stuck in the back there. All right, so we got it off of there finally. But uh, let's get the. We'll just take the bake pan and just kind of set it off to the side here for a moment. All right, while that pizza cools off, I'm going to take some of these chicken chunks here, like chicken nuggets, lightly bread it. I'm just going to put some of those on the air fry basket here. Set them out like this. I'm just going to put the rest of this bag in here because I don't have a whole lot left. Now I'm going to wait the cooker up, and I'm going to set it to air fry, and up the temp to 450 going to up the time, well, we'll leave the time at 20 minutes, and we'll just hit start with that, let it go through its preheat, and while that's preheating, I'm going to bring my pizza back over here, and going to get a slice of that off, and just put it on the plate here for you, and you can see the pizza, and it's soggy on the bottom, I'm just going to do a bite of it. Yeah, that, um, you know, I mean, pepperoni pizza is good, but as far as cooks, that, I'll have to say, is a loser. I will never do a pizza like that again. Um, Lord will I never again. Um, you know, use the wire rack, in my opinion. I mean, 
and Lord willing it doesn't cause any problem or anything. But, you know, I'm going to be using a Y rack is all I can say. I'm just going to let this thing finish preheating, then get the chicken in there. Alright, time to add our food. We're just going to slide it on in there like so. And I'll just keep an eyeball on things and bring it back when they look like they're done. Alright, these have been going for just 10 minutes, but I'm going to give them a pause and a temperature check at 10 minutes because we know this thing cooks super hot and things look like they may already be done. So let's see what's going on. There's been no smoke during the cook until uh, I open the door there. Yeah, things are already, I mean, they're in the 150s. I mean, you know, with these, I mean, I guess for you who, you know, don't mind stuff that was already pre-cooked, you know, eating it a little lower than 165, that's up to you. I like to make sure that mine is definitely all the way. I'm just going to give it another minute because, you know, some of us just don't trust these folks as much as some others. All right, so now it's been 11 minutes, so just going to get in there and do a check again. And uh, let's see. Yeah, 11 minutes and things are all good, hot, and done. So I'm going to go ahead and get these off. While I get these off, I'm going to talk to you about cleaning while I'm getting them off. Basically, as you're, well, when you're cleaning, you want to use a, like, a soapy rag and, you know, wet, warm, soapy rag to just basically wipe the interior and everything off good and nothing abrasive. And as far as the accessories, you can put them into the dishwasher. They do not give guidance on a rack level as far as the dishwashing is concerned. But we've got these all off. Let me make sure I get those doors right. Got these off, and so we'll do a taste test and finish things up. All right, so these are still kind of warm, but thank God for them, and we're going to try and do a taste test and not burn not burn the mouth in the process. Alright, they're crispy on the outside, moist on the inside. Did them real quick, did a good job. This thing knocks stuff out way faster than expected. Performs above expectations, you know, with the air fry knocking things out real quick like that. When you're doing the bake or the pizza, it takes some time because, you know, the bake and the pizza aren't using that air fry fan like air fry. But we saw that toast, even on both sides, just 3 minutes 30 seconds was pretty good. So the cooker works pretty well in my opinion. But, you know, I'll continue using it. Lord willing, give you a 30-day review down the line. And you can check that out when it comes out. And so um, there's a one-year warranty. I wanted to mention that. There's a one-year warranty with this cooker. And with all of that said, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Share the video with a friend. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification icon. And good eating.